A study from the University of Arizona found that the average pen during its expected lifespan has about eight owners. And for example, a pen at a bank on average harbors about 2,400 germs per square inch, which makes it several orders of magnitude dirtier than a toilet seat. And it just so happens that when Ben Walsh from Gravitas Pens was unfortunately tied up in the hospital for quite some time, what he saw was pens getting passed around, put down in services, given to someone else, dropped on the floor, picked up again, written on, put in a pocket, given to someone else and thought, wait a second, this thing's getting passed around. Germs are going everywhere. Meanwhile, we're all spraying surfaces and cleaning them, wearing masks, disinfecting our hands all the time, but nothing was getting done about pens. So what do you do if all you do for a living is make pens? Well, you look at the situation and go, well, what is a way I could improve this and help stop the spread of germs? So the solution Ben Walsh came up with was to design an antimicrobial pen made specifically for environments where it is critical to stop the spread of germs. So this is what he designed. We're going to roll through this, go through all the different features and what makes this antimicrobial and talked about what he made. So here's what we got. We got a solid stainless steel pen. This is made from 304 stainless steel. It has, it's tough to, you know, describe on a video, but the motion on this pen to reveal the uh, ballpoint tip here is absolutely perfect. Just a super smooth, it has that click, click, snick, snick, whatever sound you want to make to describe it, but it is just absolutely gorgeous. This is a Schmidt DR545KS twist mechanism. Pretty much the best you can get in the business. And to complement the pen, he's got these beautiful fine lines on here. I can try to focus it on the camera. I'll get you a close up, but it is just tough for a camera to pick up with the focus with all the shininess here. But we've got some beautiful lines that are on here. One to give a grip. And this is done through laser ablation. So he has a custom laser set up there. So you got a nice little grip on there. Same thing down here on the grip portion of the pen. This is done again through a laser setup to give a nice grippiness on the pen. Now what makes it antimicrobial isn't just the fact it's stainless steel which by the way can be fully disassembled and you can put this into an autoclave so you know tools uh, scalpels all type of stuff like that are put into autoclaves essentially a high pressure high heat oven to kill off all the pathogens germs all that type of stuff that are on there so this can go right in there with it's got a method to be cleaned which is really really nice but what the pen also has is a coating on it so the coating is applied to it via pvd that's a physical vapor deposition now it's got like sort of a standard uh, chromium nitride coating on it but the coating is also doped with silver. Now silver on its own has some lovely antibacterial, antimicrobial properties. So it's the really the release of the silver ion. So when you grip the pen, it's going to help to kill off germs. Now when I first unsheathed the pen from its holder, uh, first of all, I just went, wow, that's nice. Looks really sleek. These lines that are on here, the overall feel, it's quite a heavy pen. I'm going to go through that with you in a moment. The grip section, I thought that was really slick. Yes, the twist motion was really nice, but then all of a sudden, when the tip came out, I noticed something really slick. Now, I don't know if you if you picked up on this, but let me show you. Now, if you're hardcore into design, this detail is like, you can't go to sleep at night unless you do this. Look at that. So we put a straight edge on there. The final profile of the section there, we hold the pen, tapers down, and he perfectly matched that so that the ballpoint tip continues that profile of the pen right to the very end. Now again, does that impact the functionality? Would it write perfectly fine without that detail? Yes, but if you are hardcore into design and aesthetics, that just has to exist. Now to contrast this, here's another pen. Nothing wrong with this pen. This is a Conklin pen. It has a gorgeous uh, twist motion as well. Maybe it's even the same innards. I don't know. Looks quite nice. It's got this cracked ice orange, nice shiny trim, all these good things that are on here. But when you extend the ballpoint tip, you can see that profile doesn't quite extend the right way. Now, it doesn't look horrible, but what looks better? 
this little tip here that extends and it just it's like an extension of the pen or this one that just kind of sticks out the tip so let's take this pen apart show you what we got so it just unscrews quite nice it has really good smooth threads on the back here i'll show you that in a minute that reveals the insert now this pen is designed around taking the parker uh, g2 refill uh, there we go it's got a nice little spring in here now one thing i noticed with the spring your springs are just usually typically uh you know the same on both ends but on this one in particular it's got a nice little type of funnel profile. Now what that means is it goes on here and just sits perfectly on that refill. So you can also, it fits also the, the Schmidt refill. This is the P900. If we look down the bore of the pen, no other parts on it, just solid machined all the way through. Beautiful uh, fit and finish on the pen. On the back end part here, we can see there's a little bit of engraving. It says made in Ireland. Uh, ben Walsh Gravitas pens are based out of Dublin, Ireland. So he's got that in there as well. Again, you can see some detail on those nice lines and to top it off with his logo. And the pen just goes together very simple. This pen would come straight out of being disinfected and cleaned. Pop in your refill, screw back on your mechanism, goes on quite nice and easy. Everything's made really nice and you're ready to rock and roll. A few details about the pen. It is quite heavy being solid stainless steel. Pulls in at, uh, let's call it 51 and a half grams. Overall dimensions lengthwise, 140 millimeters and 10 millimeters in the grip. So why are we talking about this pen now? I mean, the pandemic here is wrapping up we're kind of you know, rolling back restrictions and would have been a perfect time to release it at the peak of everything. And well, that was kind of actually the exact reason he didn't. He didn't want to really profit off of COVID, off the pandemic. A lot of people lost their lives and went through a lot of challenges, losing jobs or losing their businesses. Meanwhile, he had some people raiding Costco, buying all the toilet paper, reselling it on Craigslist at three to five times the price. People selling masks that said they were great and they were just total trash. So he just had a bit of a moral dilemma trying to make a buck off the pandemic. But here we go. He has a great functional product with a need in the marketplace and said, you know what? Not now. There will be a time. So he's probably going to be launching this somewhere around the summer. Take a look on his website, gravitaspens.com. And he's going to be rolling this out at some point fairly soon. And we'll have a few different renditions as well. Now, one thing with the pen, as you notice, it's quite rolly. There's no clip on there. Uh, so that might be something you don't like. And he has some other versions. One actually, though, a little bit lighter too, because this is quite heavy. One made of titanium also has roll stops on there as well. And you could also argue, well, hey, this little grip section down there, you got these tiny little grooves that could be harboring bacteria and microbes. And you could, you know, maybe the coating won't overcome that. So he does have versions where it's smooth as well. But keep an eye out on his website for uh, maybe it's this exact pen or some different iterations that are fairly close to this coming sometime soon. I'll just write with the pen really quickly. Uh, very smooth. I, you know, I'm not a huge ballpoint person. I'm primarily a fountain pen user, but if I had to use a ballpoint, this is a very smooth refill. It keeps up. I've never had any problems with this thing writing. You can go in any direction you want. Quick, light pressure, hard pressure. It just keeps up and writes and writes and writes. So overall, my impressions of the pen, this thing is quite nice. Now, keep in mind, it's not for everybody. Uh, my wife saw this pen and she takes notes all day long and she's a ballpoint user. So she had her eyes. She says, I want to use that pen. So gave it to her for, for the week to use, but she only lasted maybe about half a day. And she just found for her hand um, and for her comfort, it was just too heavy for her. So again, if you don't have a large hand or you don't like, you know, a heavy pen, this may not be for you. But again, like I said, he's got some other materials in the queue. Titanium would shave a significant amount of weight. Now, previously in the video, we said something about like how the average pen goes through eight users during its expected lifetime. And then this pen is actually going to be passed on to Another owner uh, coming up very soon by the time you watch this video is probably already going to be passed on. Now I uh, have this other little gizmo I've shown in a couple videos in the background and I got this as a gift for someone and then when I told Ben Walsh at uh, Gravitas who this was going to he asked he said I would be so honored if you could give him one of my pens and so who these articles are going to is actually the first person I ever worked for as an engineer. 
and uh, just made a large impact on my life. He's a bit of a local legend here in the Vancouver area, but also his his name kind of extends around the world. You might not know him. Chances are you probably don't, but it's going to Dan Gelbart. Now, he is an extremely <laughs> intelligent and very interesting individual. I'm going to put a link in the bottom here in the description. Check it out. He's got a YouTube channel. That's not what he's known for, but he kind of blessed the world by doing an 18-part series on prototyping. Uh, he's also done a shop tour. If you are a fan of Ave, a lot of people say it kind of sound like him. Uh, Ave left a link to uh, Dan Gilbert's shop tour one time. Just so you can see, this is the shop the guy has at his house. He's into 3D metal printing now. Uh, his first company he sold to K uh, Kodak for a billion dollars. Didn't stop there. Uh, the instant tracking you get at FedEx. Yep, he made that as well on top of some other things. Has 125 personal patents and quite a collection of uh, historic scientific uh, scientific. Uh, instruments and there's a, a wonderful video if you're not hardcore into engineering but like that stuff i'll put a link in that as well very very interesting video and just listening to dan go through that and so uh, i came across this on ebay this is a russian kl1 circular slide ruler i didn't know what this thing was and i saw it and this i thought that is super slick and then right away i thought you know who might like something like this and who used the slide ruler back in the day when he started would be Dan Gilbert. So uh, I picked one up and I was able to reconnect with Dan and just wanted to drop it off for him. But uh, Dan being the amazing character that he is actually invited me over. He says, if you want, how about you come out to the house and uh, we can hang out in the shop. So I, <laughs> I'm through the moon to be, uh, to be doing that, spending time with Dan and uh, hanging out in his shop. So this thing's really cool. So we got a logarithmic scale on this side. And then we got all of our trigonometry here on the other side. Sorry about the glare. That's the light up above there. But how it essentially works, you can go on YouTube and learn a little bit about this. But you have sort of your zero. This would be essentially like the left side of a caliper. All right. And you can see it goes one through nine back up to ten. You can see the one, you know, it takes up a good chunk. The two to three takes up less and less and less as you go along the logarithmic scale. You can see there. We also got pi in there as well. And so if I want to do something simple. Um, let's just say, well, here we are, let's say four, and then I want to multiply four by 3.5. I scroll the top needle to 3.5, and if this thing is on, it should say 14, which it does. There's a 10, there's the five, there's the 14. So obviously, you can do that one yourself, but complex numbers, you can do that on here as well. We got squares, so the inner circle, we got three. There's the square right up there, so you could also do square roots. So if you didn't know the square root of, well, let's just go to 15, let's say. There we are there. Boom. There's your answer on the inner dial. Uh, flip it over and you can do all your uh, arc tens and signs as well. So if you want to know the sine of 30, boom, there you go. You got your answer on the uh, slide rule as well. And this is also a reciprocal side too. So it, it's really interesting little device. I don't really know a heck of a lot how to use this. I'd never used a slide ruler in my life. And to boot, when the thing came in, the needle fell off. So I, I can't give Dan a broken gift. He does have all of this stuff to, to repair this. He can make one of these himself if he wanted. He even has a, uh, a watchmaker's lathe in his shop if you check out his video. But I can't give it to him broken, so I had to take the whole thing apart there's all these gears. You have to make sure the needles are aligned because you got mathematical equations going on and the math can't be wrong and give this to Dan. So I, uh, this is going to go to him. It also actually has the original instructions in here, which is quite neat. Let me fish it out of there. So here we go here. It's got original instructions on the paper. It's, I got to be careful here. It's quite delicate. All in Russian. Uh, I managed to find, and again, thank you to everyone who posts something on the internet someone went ahead and posted the english version of these instructions which is really cool but here we are stamped i don't know if that's 1961 or 67 but uh cool little device and i just thought as a quick little thank you i have a note i'm going to be giving him as well just as a thank you um but i thought he would get a kick out of this little thing and so when i told him i'm meeting up with dan Kelbert. Ben was pretty uh, pretty ecstatic and said, you know, he would be absolutely honored if he knew 
Dan Gilbert had one of his pins. So this is who that's going to be going to as well. And while I'm spending some time with Dan, there's one thing I wanted to grab from him, uh, if, if he's kind enough to do so, is actually to, to sign my book for me. So there's one book uh, Dan's referenced multiple times and actually the other company I ended up working with after I left uh, his company um, was actually started by someone that started with Dan in his basement. The owner there also referenced this book to me before, so I ended up picking up a new version just recently. This is Building Scientific Apparatus. Now the author, this is the updated version because it has some stuff to do with electric electronics and circuit design and whatnot, but the original version was by John Moore. And if you are into machining, you know where that name comes from. That is for the Moore Jig Borer. So this is a super slick book. I mean, this is the thing where if I was going to be in a cabin in the woods, shut off from the world, but I still want to make some cool stuff, this is the book I want. It's not going to tell you how to do everything, but it's going to tell you all the concepts and all the things you need to know to start your process. So talks about just a lot of mechanical design and fabrication. We're going to get into different things like optical systems, um, <laughs> dealing with particles as well. Uh, different ap apparatus you use in electronics or detectors, how to deal with measurements, all sorts of different things in here as well. So this is a book that is just, uh, if I could only have one book for the rest of my life, this is the book I would have. So I'm going to see if I can get Dan to sign this for me as well, just because he meant so much to me starting out in my career. So big thanks to, uh, again, Ben Walsh for sending me this pen to review. I hope uh, Dan enjoys it and uh, he enjoys this little thing as well. Thanks to everyone who's been watching. I, at some point, I'll do another video um, just chatting a little bit about Dan and, and giving you some context on him so you can check out his videos, which is an amazing resource. And uh, just want to kind of leave it there. So thanks again to everyone who's been watching and subscribing, leaving comments and giving me likes, all that stuff. that has been an absolute joy doing this channel, doing these videos. Hope you got something out of this one. We will catch you next time.